Okay. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully we are live on YouTube. How are all you this evening? I'm going to check my uh, screen here and see if I can find myself. I see people posting questions. Okay, so we are live. Okay, just give me a thumbs up if you uh, see me and can hear me. Okay, good evening, everyone. How are you guys this evening? Hopefully, um, we won't have any glitches tonight. <laughs> I'm not going to be on too long tonight, but I didn't want to cancel on you, even though it's been a crazy uh, few days the last week. But anyway, so what I thought I'd do is just kind of show you some background techniques that I have used. I may not. Okay, thanks, Debbie. Good evening. She says she can see me. Okay, so. Um, I don't have a lot of samples to show you because I kind of threw this together at the last minute, but I'm going to demonstrate some samples and uh, hopefully give you some ideas that maybe you haven't thought of, or maybe you've seen it and didn't know how to do it. So that's kind of where I'm coming from tonight. Okay. Hey, Miss Lucy Matt. <laughs> Hi there. All right. So let me uh, switch my cameras. Hold on one second. Hi there. Okay, let's try this. So all of the, um, all of my information is scrolling along the bottom of the screen, the website, um, the phone number, email that you can reach me if you have any questions. The same information is also in the description of the YouTube with links so that you can get to all the different social media and to me if you have any questions. You can post questions here. You can also reach me uh, via Facebook. You can tag me, um, put a question on my wall any of that uh, will work. Okay. All right. I'm going to hide that. Um, if you have our glass products and you're not a member of our glass private Facebook group, you need to ask to join. It's CFE, which stands for Colors for Earth, Glass Color Artist. Okay. That you need to answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, I'm not going to let you in. So don't just click on it. Make sure you do that. Good evening, Marlene. And I'm not sure if I can say your name correctly, but Laquanda, I think that's right. Hi there from Arizona. Awesome. So anyway, and if you haven't subscribed, be sure and like, um, click the bell to get notifications and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll know when I upload a video or when I'm going live. Okay. Uh, again, the website coloursforearth.com. We have a lot of free information on the website. A lot of free um, techniques that you can download. I'm constantly posting things. Um, when you purchase our glass color, you get one of these flyers, okay? And it's got all the colors on it. it talks about the concentrates, also um, all of the bubble art. So this is just a generic information that we give you. We try to put these in every order, unless you've ordered like once this week, and I happen to realize you ordered last week. If you order specific products, um, you can also uh, we have larger sheets on detailed information that we send to you also. Okay. Um, you can also request it on your order with um, just in the note section of the website when you place your order. Okay. That's another way that you can do it. So one of the ways that you can do a background, if you look at this project here, this has a silk screen and I actually used color concentrates to silk screen. This was a six millimeter piece of glass. So it was double thick. And then th we did this at retreat one year. And um, I came in with piping paste and then enamels and stuff and painted on the front. But you can see, I'll set it down there on the white so you can see it, that it makes a nice, it's a subtle background, but it's something to think about. Um, you could also stamp. So we have all the different stamps. So I'm going to show you some stamping again, how I would create a background on a piece, but you can layer things up. So if you have multiple layers of glass, that's a way that you could do it. Okay. 
So this is kind of nice. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Marlene. Okay, so that's one thing that you could do. Another, and, and the background does not have to be a complete surface. So like on this particular piece here, this is two pieces of three millimeter. On the back piece of the, uh, on the top of the bottom piece of glass, that's hard to, I actually did the stripes, you can see, because it looks dimensional. So there's nothing on the bottom, but I did the stripes on that bottom piece of glass. Then on the top piece of glass, I painted some of the design. If you look at that, you can kind of see the dimension. So the outline and the gold is on the top piece of the glass, but that caramel color, the ivory, and the brown are actually on the back side. So I outlined and then, so there's different ways that you can achieve and you can see that you can still, it blocks out that stripe. So when I did the stripe, all I did was just take painter's tape and I just dropped a piece of glass. Won't be using that one. Sorry about that guys. My mic is right over there. So you can take this painter's tape and you can tape off to do those stripes. Okay. So that's all I did as far as, and I don't know whether you know this or not, but let me show you just a little trick. Do you have any questions, Jenny, before I just interrupt me? Okay. Hey, Mary from Peculiar, Missouri. I know exactly where that is because it's right outside of Kansas City where I'm from. How are you, Mary? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, I did that wrong. Okay. So when you're doing a striped background, like this piece here. Okay. Let's see if I can set it there. So I put the full length, whatever size tape you want to use. Then I put what I call a spacer. And then I lay my next piece. And this can be done on anything, whether you're working on canvas, um, you know, whatever uh, media you're working in. And just do the same thing again. Put your spacer, do another piece. So that's a way to get a background. And then you could just, all I did was just flood my color in solid and that's how i made this background any questions on that that's kind of just an easy easy peasy background way to get something especially if you're saying i can't paint i don't know what to do painter's tape get it in different sizes cut it you know there's all different ways that you can do that okay now when i say flood the color does everybody understand i can Flood on a little bit here real quick move my keyboard out of the way so I just have actually the colors that I have in here with the exception of the bubble art is out of our sampler kit and um, the sampler I'm not sure if it's on sale or not maybe Jenny can look if it's not and you've never tried our enamels or maybe you're from the pottery world and you'd like to try some of the enamels you could um, I will give you a discount on the sampler kit. You just need to message me with all of your information as far as shipping, and I'd be happy to uh, bill you with PayPal and give you, uh, let's do 20% off on the retail price, okay? And Jenny's gonna double check. So all I'm doing is scooping up, see how much on there, it's ready to drip off. So you scoop up the enamel, and I'm just flooding it on. I'm not doing this because you get a thin application and I got a light that there we go now you can see that so you want if you want it nice and solid you have to flood it on drop and fill pool and puddle but the moment you touch your brush down you end up with translucency you are not going to get solid and opaque like this is okay so hopefully that makes sense all right so that's how you would fill it in that's how I did the teal color and that's what this color is. This is 357 teal. Okay. So that's a way that you can do a background. You can also, um, you could have that tape on there. I'm just going to fake it and put another piece over here. Uh, Jenny's asking me a question. It's just, if you push, put in glass sampler in the search bar, you'll be able to find it. It's not a kit number, it's just called glass sampler. It's got 14 colors plus the uh, black, detailing black in it. Okay, so let's say that we want to stripe it, but we want to put stamping. 
this could be done as far as this process, the stamping part could be done on your uh, ceramics also. So um, you could, cause you're gonna, you know, fire it anyway. If you put tape on something, I would definitely, if you're on ceramics, make sure you pre-fire that to reboot, move any of the residue so you don't have repelling of your uh, glaze, okay? And if you need to know more about that, you can uh, message me or write something in the uh, comments there, okay? So what I, I picked out just a few light colors of the color concentrates because we can use those on the glass. You just need to take a few precautions and I'll explain that as I go along, okay? This is light cerulean CC150. Um, you can do one of two things. You can take the dauber sponge, okay, and load. You could put it out. You could use our roller sponges and load. I like the dauber, okay? So I'm just going to load that up. The sponges absorb a lot of product. That's the disadvantage, okay? All right, and then you just lightly tap it. I'm going to have to get more onto your stamp. You're just wanting to cover the top surface. Now, if you push too hard, example, I filled it in. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but just FYI. Okay, so just gently tap it. You need it to all be shiny before you stamp, and this would apply whether you're on ceramics, uh, pottery, or on the glass. So I'm just really making sure that that's coated. And I think you can see that it's shiny, it's glossy. And then you could come over here, press it down, give it a little love, just gently tap it and then lift straight up. And you have, let me pick that up because I know it's hard to see, but it's a very light, but a nice faint background. So you could do that with any stamp, okay? And we have different, uh, this happens to be one that comes with these two in one. We've got larger stamps. Uh, some of my original stamps are on the wood blocks. It doesn't matter what you're on, okay? So as long as you're just coating. So like this is a holly leaf and berry. So if you're doing a Christmas piece and you want a background, you could take the greens and you could stamp it. Just rock it back and forth. You see that it's soft and subtle. So I would use a lighter value of color in the background if I were going to stamp the background. Does that make sense to everybody? Hopefully. Well, hello, Margie Adams. How are you from Houston? <laughs> Long time no talk. OK, so you could come back and just continue and add another stamp. So you could do this all the way. Or if I only wanted, maybe I wanted to use a portion of it and it overlapped into the next one, you can do that too. I can't get a hold of these. But do you see how it's there? So you could keep going. And then when you take your tape off, you have a white line that you could paint in there if you wanted. Okay? So there's tons of different ways to make those stamps work for you. I think it's a fun, let me get... Um, See, I picked out the 150 light cerulean, like shadow green. See, it's a nice, soft, muted pastel um, gray, the 103 vellum gray, the 130 blush cabernet. So those are really soft, but pick out just a lighter color of what you're going to do in your design. Or you can always take the white concentrate and add it to your color to make a lighter version of it. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully. All right. Any questions? I don't see any up there. I'll dob off some of that uh, blue and I'm going to grab this green to do the holly with again. Um, if you've used your rubber stamps in a different medium, say um, inks or acrylics, just make sure you clean it. And I would clean it with alcohol, clean it with distilled water and or distilled vinegar. Sorry and make sure that it is really super clean before you use it. See the holly there? So that's a nice subtle background. And when you're using these stamps, um, I think there's a picture of this out on my page. Um, I've done like balls, ceramic balls, and you can actually make this rotate and go around it. So 
with the hard ones. When you're using these, you can do the same thing. You can, you know, hook it and go around the piece and come off to create your stamping. Uh, but you'll see some of that out there. And then you can come back and you can actually fill in some of these areas. So let me zoom in and hopefully we won't have any issues here. Okay. So this is vermilion, which is our red, our non-toxic red. So after I stamped, I can either take the handle of a brush, and I've already mixed up my color, or I can take a stylus, which I did not get out, of course. And I don't even know that I have one. So what I'm going to do is take <laughs> pencil. Okay, you make do with what you've got. So I'm just going to take the pencil and I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to dot my holly leaf, holly berries. And I'll hold this up to the camera in just a second so you can see it. But it is a way that you can stamp and then you can come back and you can add detail on that if you want it that way okay if you're doing the concentrates for an overall coverage on your background make sure that you take a q-tip and i like these pointed ones they're for makeup okay and you lean it to the side so let me turn it this way so you kind of lean it in and just seesaw back and forth just to remove any excess right at the very edge and I know this is light and you can't hardly see it, but there is a white edge along here. The color concentrates will not seal if they're all the way out to the edge. In other words, your glass will not fuse together because this is a non-enamel. It has no glass in it. Okay, so make sure with designers or with the concentrates that you shave off that little bit along the edge so that um, your glass will seal. Okay. Any questions, Jenny? No, they're a quiet bunch tonight. Okay, so that's how you can do a stamping. Okay, just something to think about. It's an easy uh, way of doing it, and anybody can do that, right? Yes. You can also do, this is another piece that um, we did many years ago at a retreat. This also was a six millimeter piece of clear glass and so what we did was we marbleized on the back of it put it face down on our firing paper whether it's thin fire or papyrus doesn't stick it just creates more of a matte finish and then i did the bow or excuse me the ribbon and the holly and the bells on the top okay so that's kind of a fun way so as far as marbleizing let me get my little handy dandy. Let's do, I want to pick something that you can see. Um, how about sapphire blue and powder blue? Okay. And you can stripe and do the marbling in and then pull the stripes up. So, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of ways that you can do this. Okay. So, if you're marbleizing, you, I usually start with my light color. Make sure your enamels are at their proper consistency. I just gave it a quick little stir. They need to, when you use your tool and you dip in and you pull out, the tool needs to be clean. So it needs to drop by the count of three. One, two, three. So it dropped by thir two, so I'm good. That's the drip test. And I talk about that in quite a few of the videos. Okay, so let's just say we we're marbleizing this little section over here. I'm going to grab. And I'm just going to make dots. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Making dots to cover like a one inch area is all I would do at one time. Wipe off the excess. And then come over here and I'm going to get my dark. This is the sapphire. And I'm going to fill in those sections that I left open. By just touching. And then it, it the other color starts to grab to it. But this is a fun background that you can do. It really just depends on what your focal point. And what I like to say is you should have three layers of interest in your design. So you should have the background and then a medium and then uh, whatever your focal is. So I'm going to wipe off that excess. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a figure eight or an S. Okay. 
So I'm going to grab like my dark blue and do a figure eight and an S. Wipe off that. I need some more dark on that one end. So I'm going to just grab the dark and just remember to wipe your brush off as you're doing this, just because whatever you pick up, you're not removing it. You're just moving it. Um, for those of you that live in Texas or other states, I say don't do this around and around and around. No Texas tornadoes because you'll end up with mud. You will not see the separation of the colors. And let me hold that up so that you can see that better. Okay. So you can see. So if I needed light blue in a section, I just grabbed the light blue and I'm going to drag it through. Wipe off my tip because I had dark blue on there. Grab and drag. Okay, so there are ways to go back and fix. This is great for leaves or just that solid background. Okay, so you can see how that is. So st I started with my blue, I added my gold sparkle, and then I swirled, but I only did like an inch at a time. I didn't try to do the whole thing because it's going to dry and you're not going to be able to move or manipulate that color and move it around. Any questions on that? That's just another way to do a background. So this was a Christmas package is what I uh, did with that one. No questions? I don't see any. Okay. Here's just another piece to kind of show you some options. So this was a piece that I um, demonstrated for uh, the RAGS, the Retail Art Glass Studios up in um, hmm, Wisconsin or somewhere. I don't remember where I was at up north. Anyway. Um, these are just pours that you can do, and I did them on a little four by four single piece, made it larger than what I was going to get or what I needed so that I could trim off any of the edges that came in because you have to fire to 1380. Okay, so those are different ways that you can do marbleizing. You could do a pour. This particular one here, and I did not, I can't show you this one because I didn't bring any of the saran. So I put colors down. And then I laid saran wrap on it and kind of mushed it in and then peeled it up. And you can kind of see that it created a pattern. That's another background. It could be three light colors. I wouldn't go any more than five. That's my general rule of thumb. So that's a way to do that. Um, this has got color underneath, marbleized. And then I put um, fine frit over the top of it. So it kind of diffuses itself is fun. This is just colored frit. So I made actual copper frit. And I don't know that I've showed that and I don't have any too. Oh, maybe I could. I do have frit. Um, if you were going to do a background and this is just um, a combination of the copper and then I put clear over it. So it kind of diffused it. But I wanted you to see the different ones. And then I cut them up and made it look like a quilt. I thought that was kind of a fun. It's a way to use it. Basically, you're creating part sheets. And then you're using it within another piece. Okay. Um, okay. This one, let me move this out of the way so you can see it. So this one, I don't know if you can see that well enough. I have a piece of white glass under it. So this is just bubble art. Um, actually, Debbie Elmer did this, but this would be a great background. You would do it on the back side of your top glass and then just put another piece of clear or whatever color underneath it. So putting the bubble colors down and then coming in and moving it slightly. So what I've got here is 5051 Cerulean Blue. The bubble art colors you can thin down almost 50-50 uh, compared to the other colors. You want them a little thinner. The thinner they are, they're going to make finer bubbles like this. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Um, you can take the Sumi brush, any of your Sumi brushes, and you can just like brush on a thin coat. You could take a fan brush, but that's all this is. It's just a thin brush application. You can also just thin this down with medium to retain the color, and you could pour it on. You could also um another way to do it is to put some of the glass medium down kind of smear that on your glass 
then grab some of the medium or excuse me the bubble art and just that way it kind of coats the glass so you have some movement and your color's not grabbing like it did on this one or you could thin it down important but that would be a way that you could make like a water type background or well, anything sky water doesn't matter some colors bubble more than others remember that look at your charts before you do any of your bubble art because some of them um, do get quite large okay no questions you guys are quiet 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 okay so that's that i'm gonna wipe that off oh no she's ruining it <laughs> all right and let me grab another towel because i want to show you another background so i already have a video out there for the background which i called it watercolor background on my toucan piece um but i'm going to do it again and i've got this frit here and i'll show you how to do that okay so what i did with that particular piece is let's just get yellow the vermilion so i'm using 22 310 um Let's throw in 361 and let's put the blue here, the powder blue. Okay. So let me back off just a bit so you can see all those colors. So what I did was take and I misted with water. This is just a fine, fine mist bottle. Okay. Not the ones with the pump, the ones with like the hairspray type mister. And then grab your Sumi brush. I had to rinse that color out. Again, work from light to dark. Um, I'm going to go in this order, okay? And I'm going to just grab some of it, and I'm just going to kind of mush it. So these are all the G-Series enamels that I'm using. And because the water is there, water starts diluting the color. The medium cause it. You could put the medium down instead. The medium will help you retain the color, and it won't dilute it, Okay. Now, you got to just do it and get done because every time you touch it, you're going to lift it up. You can also keep spraying as you're working. I'm going to wipe out and then go in. I think I'm going to go this route here. Grab my green. Oh, they're quiet because they're fascinated. Okay, I hope that's the case. <laughs> or bored or asleep, one or the other, right? <laughs> okay, so now I can see that it's getting dry. You can also mist it and come back and you can come back, I'm gonna dampen another Sumi brush. So let's say I wanted to soften that or I can go back with some yellow. You have to work fairly quickly. Now, when I did that original video, I did the whole background with this brush believe it or not i just grabbed and went in there and did it and sometimes it's a good thing to use a smaller brush because you um you're working in a small area so that you can dilute it and manage it a little more could you put the medium down absolutely i can put some medium down and i can kind of move it around with a brush the medium's going to stay open longer. The water's going to start evaporating. Okay. So I just kind of mushed it around, changed the direction of my brush so there wasn't a pattern. So find a brush. Let's go back to this guy that works for you. Okay. I'm going to wipe out that excess and let's just grab some. So just pick out your colors before you start. Now, because I put the medium down, I can see it kind of haloing and kind of, and you got to be careful what colors you put next to each other because that green and red are going to start turning brown if I get too crazy with it and start overlapping it too much. Okay. But that is another way. You can mist it and you can also, I need more hands, pick it up and let it run. Or you can pick it up and mist it and make it run. And you can turn it the other way. And you see that starting to run? See that right here, here, and here? That's kind of cool, huh? 
So you might want to do something, you know, like that. I am going to rinse my brush before I go into that blue because, because, because I am. I just don't want red in my blue. Um, so this is 322 uh, lemon peel, 361 green leaf, 310 vermilion, and I'm getting some red. So I'm going to rinse that brush out thoroughly. And then 344, which is powder blue. And I did uh, clean my glass. Um, always use for our products, our preference is white vinegar. Clean your glass with a uh, like a shop towel or a paper towel, and then um, buff it clean, and try not to touch the surface. I've got some area here that it was like it didn't want to. Um, it was repelling. Let's see how much stronger that is when I use the smaller brush versus the large. So that may determine what you use, but I can also just miss that and I'm going to put a paper towel down because if I tilt it I can make it run see that I can grab it there let's tilt it this way see that red's running I don't want that not that I'm going to leave this on here but so you can go different directions so you can see how it's pretty easy so you could do this on the bottom glass whether it be clear or white and then your next piece of glass you could paint on the bottom and the top both so that's a way to get a background and this is a hair yes it'll burn out but i also don't want it to leave a line so i'm trying to grab it there we go and then what to fix that i'm just going to mist it and tilt and run And I'm going to tap with my finger just to try to fill that in. And it's not going to fill in. So we'll go get some color. If you don't know how to fix it, you know, and that's why I'm showing you. Okay. Any questions on that? So if you dilute with the glass medium, which is what we've mixed with, the GM300, you'll retain your color. The moment you start adding water to the mix, you start diluting the color. Okay, so you may want to, if you want to keep it soft, but you don't want to lose the color, you may want to coat it with the medium. You could put a mister end on this bottle and mist the medium on there if you want it even. Okay. All right, any questions? I don't see any. Let me just tap that. It's kind of fun. And like I said, there's that other video out there. Um, the stamping and you could even do say you have this one okay and then maybe the clear glass and I don't have the exact size of clear that I had but let's say you have the clear and now you want to add another layered background so let's grab a stencil all right I got glass moving I like to tape mine down. Of course, I've got just a small one here, okay? Um, you could take that same, remember we were using the concentrates, and I do have stamping videos on the concentrates out there on YouTube. So I've just loaded the concentrate on my sponge again, and here, and just lightly add. And what would look really cool is to do white and then maybe you pick out one of this design for the top layer and you actually paint, say, a white flower. Uh, this is our TCW803. It's called Distress Lace. And I don't remember if it comes in a 12, but this is the 6-inch size that I'm using. Once again, if you're using concentrates, make sure that you um, don't Go all the way out to the edge and make sure you wipe it off. I'm going to wipe off there where I got outside. Technically, I would have a six by six piece of glass and put this on it. Okay, so we'll get rid of that one. So now 
let me show you. If you had this, of course, I can't lay it down on there, but can you see that? A nice, soft, subtle pattern to that. So that would be kind of cool. And then you could put this on the back side of that glass and come on top and maybe paint one element or just a flower. So you can give it like a tie-dyed look or just a soft layered like fabric type look to it. It just gives it more dimension. Do you have to fire each? Yeah, do you, thanks Jenny. Um, do you have to fire each glass separately or can you just layer them? Marlene, you can just layer them. So remember if you're only doing, uh, these are both three millimeter pieces so I can stack them. Sift between, always, I don't care what you're doing, sift with clear powder. Just remember that when you're doing the concentrates, oh, there's my, you wanna make sure that you take that color off of the very edge. So I'm just leaning that in and I would take it off my edges if I got outside, okay? So that when I'm down here, my glass can fuse. Okay, so no, you do not have to. If you're using two millimeter or if you're using more than two layers of glass, just make sure you have a dam and you would dam it. And then um, just do some of the same firing schedules I have listed on the color concentrate page with a little bit more hold so that you can get rid of the organic uh, parts within that color concentrate since they have no glass in them. Okay, so yes, I'm a one and done. I like to get it done, Marlene, and just use it and be done with it. Okay, so that's another way. Hopefully this has given you some ideas. You know, if you liked the rock, this is like a organic matter, they call it. Here's some words. So that would be fun. Put that in the background. You, you could use that gray I talked about. Um, and then you can layer up. And if you go watch those other videos, I show you how. And I actually have a DVD on color concentrates and stenciling is one of the topics. Um, there's multiple PDFs out there as far as uh, you can purchase them. There's a DVD you can purchase, but there are tons of free things also. So look at those and see if that interests you. Any other questions? No? Miss Debbie Savage? Do you have any? Okay, so uh, Jenny just looked it up and that stencil that I was using does come in six and 12. So that is the Distressed Lace TCW 803. The S just means small, but it is part of the number, okay? And then like uh, this one, I, I picked these out because I thought they'd be fun. Can you see that over that? That would be really cool just doing uh, white. Let's do a white piece real quick. I wanna show you what that looks like. I need more table space. <laughs> oh my goodness. You never have enough room, right? I don't care what you're doing. Okay, so here's a clear. Now, you got to think about it though. I wish it was reversed, that it would only leave the lines. Because if I put the color all the way over it, it's going to fill it in completely white. Or maybe you want to use nutmeg. Yes. Oh, I, I was just asking Debbie if you um, had any uh, questions about what I was doing. You were being quiet. That's all. That's all. i got to get another sponge. Hold on, because that one's got blue in it. And there's no way that's going to transfer. Okay. So let's just do white. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. But if you were doing, like, say, a rock background, maybe you wanted a green wash. Okay or maybe it's blue, a couple of different blues for water, and you're gonna make pebbles in the water, and then you put this on top of it. You could do nutmeg and flesh tone. I mean, there's just so many different, you know me, I can go on and on forever, right? Have you figured out I like to talk? <laughs> I just don't like to show my face. I don't like cameras, believe it or not, guys. You don't catch a whole lot of pictures of me. I want you down here learning the techniques instead of looking at me. Okay. All right, Debbie. Great. All right. I'm gonna do, not going to do the whole thing, but I want to show you how cool that looks. And then I'm going to put that watercolor one underneath it. So look at that. Isn't that, I think that'd be awesome. 
kind of cool. So if you did it and like I said, do blues in your background for water, blue and greens, and then come back in and do um, like nutmeg and um, you know, a couple of the different browns, I think I'm going to stick this back on here and mess it up, but that's okay. Uh, let me grab my, so nutmeg is 181. See if I've got any in there. Oh yeah. Okay. And remember, you can always add white to anything. So if you wanted the brown. So when you're sponging through a stencil or on a stamp, be sure and work it in to the sponge over on your palette. Don't just grab it and go straight over. You need to really work it in so you get an even application. And see, so you could come back over here and you could add. So I'll show you what that looks like just by adding that color. Um, what's another color we could add? 186. I'm going to use that same space and just anchor so you have it um, so it doesn't move on you or tape it down if you need to do that. So let's look at that. That's pretty awesome. Don't you think? I think it is. You got to just ignore the background there. Okay, look at it like this. Okay, so that one is called Mini Organic Matter. It's TCW564. You can just go to Fired Art Supplies and then go to Stencils and find all the stencils that we have in stock. Okay, pretty neat. I like that. I might have to do a technique with that. Okay. No questions, they're quiet. And there's that other one, okay? So you can use the color concentrates. I wouldn't sponge the enamels, could you? Yes, but your color concentrates are a heck of a lot cheaper, like half the price, okay? So that's why I would do those. Um, you know, and then the other thing is you could do a quill pen background. Um, this was done with the designers and the black designer, DZ201, and the quill pen and I mixed it with the medium and you could just do a quill pen background if you wanted to be really detailed, okay? But you can also, like you could paint a design and maybe you wanted like, here's your design and then the other half with the pen work, you can do that. You can just, you know, you can go on the bottom, on the top, you just have to sift over or cap the desires, okay? Um, you know, and there's different stencils out there, you know, they're everywhere. Like here's another one you could do like corner motifs. What did you ask me? Oh, how come that popped up? I must have hit the button. Sorry, I turned the comment assister on and I don't want it on. Okay, all right. So you could do corner motifs and then, you know, keep it simple. This is a plaid one that's got multiple borders. This is the number if you're interested. It's by Folk Art. PlaidOnline.com you can find, and you can find them on Amazon also. All right, guys, down and dirty, quick. Hopefully that gives you some ideas for uh, backgrounds. I'm going to switch my, why did it do that? It came back on there again. That's crazy. All right, so I'm going to switch me up here. Let's see if we can do this. All right, let's do it the other way. All right, any questions on what you see there? Um, and can you still hear me, I guess would be the other thing. Okay, let me hide this and I still have my mic on. Okay. All right, guys. Can you believe it? I kept it to a short one. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, if you have any other questions, just message me or email me info at colorsforearth.com or ceramicsbypaula at gmail.com. And... Hopefully that gives you some ideas that can transfer to whatever medium you're working, whether it's ceramic or glass, same principles apply. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off unless you have any questions. And that keeps popping on there. I don't understand that. <laughs> That's weird. Very strange. I'm going to hide it. There we go. We have that. Okay. All right, guys. Do what Debbie's doing what?
Oh yeah, her necklace, her icon for her, uh, whatever it's called. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. If there's no less questions, you're welcome, Eddie. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you next week with uh, ceramics or brush strokes. I don't know. We'll see. I've got some pieces I got to put in the kiln to fire to bisque. So I'm anxious to work on a textured piece uh, that's porcelain clay and flowers. I may show you how to do that decorating next week. Okay. Take care and uh, happy painting. Good night.